Welcome to Home Learning Day 5, boys and girls. Hopefully all is going well with you during this unique home learning opportunity. Let's see what's going on today. There's the list of things. Plenty, plenty to do. If you're falling behind, that's all right. You only can do your best. But we have to remember the important part of that little saying is to make sure that we are doing our best. So do your best. And if you fall a little bit behind, um, my recommendation is really focus on that math. Try to get that math taken care of and understand it. Speaking of math, today we're going to see something a little bit new, or maybe you've seen it before. Let's review a little bit. We know what an equation is. It's when the two sides of an equal sign have the same value. 651 is equal to 600 plus 51. Now, what if the two sides aren't equal? Well, those are called an inequity. 427 is not equal to 8 plus 3. Now, sometimes we will have to compare two numbers, and people want to know what's the greater number or what's the smaller number. And those are called comparison problems. Here are two. This sign is called the greater than sign. I did a great job coming through all my schooling with math, but when I was in high school, I still did not know how to read this sign. I knew how to use it, but I didn't know how to read it. So boys and girls, I want you to say this with me. 427 is greater than 11. That's a greater than sign. I think of this big opening right here as being the alligator's mouth and the alligator always eats the big things. They're not eating the insects, they're eating the antelope and the zebra. Now, this one comparison problem says 11 is less than 427. The smaller, the smaller point here is like the little bird's mouth that eats the little seeds. It can't eat the big zebra. So um, that's how I think of it. So read fr from left to right, it's 11 is less than 427. And uh, review this one, read from left to right, 427 is greater than 11. Graders, I have a special way to remember which way the comparison problem signs point and how to read them. So, a special cheer for you. Let's do it together. Please stand up and follow along with me. This is my alligator's mouth, boys and girls. It turns towards the big number. This is the greater than sign. Gulp, gulp, gulp. So this is my bird mouth. It always points in the direction of the smaller figure. When it's facing or pointing towards the left, we read this as less than, 54 is less than 267. So, so we can remember this by doing the special alligator cheer. Alligator, alligator, eat them up, eat them up. Alligator, alligator, eat them up, eat them up. Tweet, 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 tweet. 
Let's take a quick look at it, our, our assignment today, boys and girls. Now, these are a little bit tricky because if you look at number one, the authors have really made this confusing to me because when I look at this, I see the same numbers, but when I really slow down and look at it, I see 765 is greater than 756. You, you can see the, the digits in the ones and tens are just switched around on the two sides of the circles, boys and girls. And I, I think that's how it is for, for some of these problems. I think actually, you know, that is a big trick. You gotta really slow down and pay attention and also follow your directions. This one right here, it says write the numbers in order from least to, to greatest. My experience with third graders show that you simply don't read the directions least to greatest because a problem will come up where it will say write the numbers least to greatest and then the next part will say write the numbers greatest to least and you don't you write them all least to greatest so make sure you really focus on the directions in these type of problems and be careful be really careful because you can see how it's easy to switch the numbers around. A word about comparison bars before we move on to the story problems. If, you if we take a look at this problem, David has five marble marbles and Anna has eight marbles. You can see in the comparison bar that David, with the smaller amount his number goes into this smaller rectangle. Anna, with the larger amount, her number goes in the larger rectangle. And the difference between those two amounts is a circle. So that's usually represented by hint words like more and fewer. Let's read these problems together. Unknown smaller amount. Will ate eight fewer crackers than Louise. Louise ate 24 crackers. How many crackers did Will eat? Now go back and read it another time and underline the important words in the question, the hint words, and the important information we need to solve the problem. Well, good job, third graders. Wow, you did a great job. Look at that. Now, the important words that we need to underline, of course, we always start with that question. How many did Will eat? Okay, well, we don't know for sure. We know how many Louise ate. Um, okay, well, let's see here. Will ate eight fewer. Major hint word right here. Fewer than Louise. So well, how many did Louise eat? 24. Okay, well, let's start with eight fewer. So eight fewer would be, a fewer is a hint word for subtraction. So I would probably start right like this. Eight, you're going to subtract eight from now, what are we going to subtract those eight from? Well, of course, we know it's going to, it has to be a larger number. And look at that. Eight, eight fewer crackers than Louise, and Louise had eaten 24. Okay, let's put that in there now. So one piece at a time. There's the 24. 24 subtract eight is our expression. Let's see if we can figure out an equation. Okay, there we're all set up with an equation. And n is our variable, our number that we're looking for. And if we think about that, we can figure that out. 24 subtract 8 equals what? n is going to be equal to 16. 
Well, there's our answer. Well, no. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. You're right, boys and girls. That is not our answer. Absolutely not. 16 what? 16 crackers. Or if you really want to be clear, you can write a sentence. Will ate 16 crackers. You have to have that label. Now, how does that look when we use comparison bars? There you go. What Louise has, the larger, largest amount goes into the largest rectangle. And the number that's designated fewer, eight, will go here. And sometimes it's the number designated more. This is what we found, 16. That's how many we'll had. So when we have a subtraction problem, one of these two will be blank. If both of these have a number in and this one's empty, it would be an addition problem. So basically we're finding the difference when one of these two spaces are blank. Okay, boys and girls, now continue on with your daily language review, your word work, writing your Beatitudes in cursive. I hope you read it in the Bible. And um, your Charlotte's Web. It looks like I asked you to work on Charlotte's Web chapter 19 for two days. That's good. And um, Well, boys and girls, um, continue working hard. I know you're doing your best. That's all you can do. And always remember, go Zephyrs!